Hello everybody, welcome back to The Devil's Lair. Um, I'm host, Randy Meadows, with a special guest co-host again this week, uh, Mr. Mike Tucker. Welcome back, Mike. Good to be here. Another exciting week of uh, Blue Devil Athletics. Um, Tiff County went down to Thomasville. It was a, it was a seesaw game. We yeah, came on the, the short end of the stick, but it was a it was a really really good ball game, and uh, you know we learned something about learned something about ourselves Friday night. You know we you know small things kept us from winning that ball game. We could have lost that game by two touchdowns, but we could have won it by two touchdowns too. Very easily. Yeah, but, I mean you know everybody wants to talk about the turnovers. <clears throat> you know, had three interceptions, but they fumbled the ball three times. That's right. So I mean you you know to me that's kind of and if you look at the the turnovers. The turnovers. One was at the end of the quarter. Yeah, I mean uh, it was hail mary. mary just That's threw right. it up. The other one, other two interceptions he had. Both of them was tip passes. That's right. Uh, one, the first one he threw was, I think it was like th third and you know twenty five or something. So I mean basically right. that acted like a punt. It was a punt anyway. Yeah, you punted her down early. I think he uh, got tipped at like the the forty and maybe he got intercepted yeah. officially at the 35, yeah. 30 or something. So I mean it was, you know. Um, what bothers me, and there's an article um, I posted on our website today. Um, I mean, I'm sitting in the stands, and just the first time something went wrong Friday night, I just heard people complaining and fussing and hollering and just acting a fool, and it just it drove me nuts, Mike. It, it just absolutely killed me because, I mean, these are 17-year-old kids that we're right. talking about, you know? Right, and I heard the same thing. I I sat up at the top of the bleachers in the same section you was in, so I was listening to totally different people. And like you said, I mean, it was, you know, why don't we throw the ball more? Why do they run that play? You know, it's easy to sit in the stands and uh, be coaches. You're never wrong up there. That's right. But the coaches that are on the field, you know, they spend countless hours with them kids. They know, you know, and they're doing the best job they can. That's right, man. Uh, you know, you know, and, and that's another thing. You know, me and uh, I went down there with a buddy of mine, Keith Barr. And, uh, you know, You're just going to drop his name yeah, right just here? just throw it out there, you know, put him <laughs> in the mud, you know. Uh, but, you know, we was talking during the game, and, uh, you know, every now and then, Tifton's crowd would stand up and holler and, you know, clap for the boys. But if you notice, Thomas County Central, they was up the whole game. And that's, <coughs> that's something I've noticed that's bothered me for Excuse a long me. time. You go to a home game here, you know, uh, the last one they had, the, the stands was packed. But you hear a lot of chatter, but it's about, it, it's kind of like a social media thing. And that bothers me. You know, Friday well, night, we need to pack that stadium. We need to be loud to show the boys that we're behind them. Uh, and, fire, you know, because they will feed off of, you know, the fans. Crowd, yeah. Uh, and that's my biggest pet peeve. And you know what, man, I'm as guilty as anybody, you know. I'm... I had a cheerleader just look at me dead in the eyes, and I'm like, I just froze. Like, I felt like I should stand up and do something, but mm -hmm. then I'd be the only person standing up clapping. But you know the thing about that? I mean, if you get up, the maybe, one behind you will get up. That's right. You know. Uh, well, you know why I didn't get up, Mike? It's because I was sitting on the front row, and I didn't want to stand up and be in everybody's way. I'm that's the, that's the God's honest truth. I was on the front row. And I don't want to be that guy that stands up and blocks three people. Well, I might take four, probably six, four or five. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah block. There. Probably a good thing I said at the top. You was at the bottom. You know, <laughs> block their view. I, I don't want to be that guy because not everybody is that fan. But we need more of those fans. Yeah, we do. And, and that's what I wrote. It's not a social event. You know, it's support. Support comes in many different fashions. Um, you know, monetarily, that's great. Right. But sometimes you need to stand up and clap and cheer. Right. And, need to be vocal and whatnot. That's right. That's exactly right. So. But like I said, you know, everybody needs to come out Friday night. And uh, before we talk about Thomas Kansas, you know, let, let's have a let's pack the house at Brody Field. Yeah, um, let, let's do that. We uh, we played a very good ball game Friday night, man. We I, did. I was really proud of the guys and, and the effort they put out. You know, we could sure we could have do, did a few things different. We didn't. You know, we went a different route on some things. But that we said last week that this was a big game. It was an important game. Right. But we didn't have to win that game. Right. And, and, you know, I'm sure the coaching staff looked at it that way, too. Maybe did some things different in preparation for region, you know. And that's going to be also, you know, they, with the offense that Thomas County Central run uh, or runs, uh, coffee runs a similar. That's right. 
veer, you know, like they did. And Camden, so, Coffee, Ken, yeah. Lounge, they so, all. But, they, you know, the one, one thing about it, they don't have a kid that's going to Clemson next year. That's exactly uh, right. You know, I seen him Friday night bottle up in the backfield several times. And next thing you know, he's 10 yards down the field. Uh, he reminds me of a kid that come down and played at Brody Field a few years ago, Mike Davis. That's actually at South Carolina now. Yeah. You know, we couldn't stop him. Uh, and you hate to say, you know, you got 11 guys on offense, 11 on defense. You hate to say one guy is the difference. But if you look at the stats, and I know you got some stats, and, I mean, he, he was about half of the yards, rushing yards, or total yards that they had. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he, he is going to Clemson as a running back, not a quarterback. That's right. But, I mean, he went six for eight with 99 passing yards. I yeah. mean, he threw the ball effectively. Yeah. Well, and first, that's what bothered me. You know, people were going to fuss and complain, but I didn't understand why we, we I mean, they throw eight passes a game. That's a lot for them right there. Right. I, you know, um, I thought we should have had man coverage out there, and that would be my only gripe if I could gripe about something. But they didn't. They, they you know. Well, when, when you're getting beat so bad, you know, mm -hmm. I noticed Titton had a uh, five down lineman who was still getting beat. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, you've got to pull your safeties up to cover, you know. Support the run, the run attack. There were yeah. several times he dropped back two pass, and we was in zone, man to man, or man to man coverage. And he pulled it and down. And he didn't have anything. So, he, yeah. what's he do? Just take off and he'll, you know, run for 30, 40 yards. That, that's where a triple threat is dangerous. Yeah. Oh, gosh, it's just unreal. So, so you have to, you know, kind of pick your pores and. I know. It's tough. And like you said, it's a shame that one person can impact the game like that. But he's just one of those kids that can do it. So, you know, he comes from a good lineage. His, uh, his cousin, I believe, is Tashar Joyce, who's playing in the NFL right now mm -hmm. as a running back. Mm -hmm. And he played down there and obviously was an influence on him. And uh, they're, they're just – they're a good team, and they'll do some good things this oh, yeah, year. They'll go far in the playoffs. Uh -huh. They should. But you know one thing on the we was coming home Friday night we listened to the football show and I guess the guy the announcer for Thomas County Central called in and I'm sure you heard it and you know probably yeah. everybody else has heard it too but they said you know Randy you Young I think his name you is. take this guy the tourist kid that you know yeah he's a phenomenal athlete but off the field he's even better than he is there you know that he you know kind of like we talked a couple weeks ago about Malik Henry. Uh, just a, a outstanding human being, uh, and that's that's what you need more than kids out there. Oh, I agree. <clears throat> I totally agree. So, so things didn't go away in, in Thomas County, but um, we we had some bright spots. Oh, yeah. I mean, it wasn't you know we got we got beat. We didn't lose. We got beat. There's a, there's a, a difference. That, tip your hat to them. They was a better football team Friday night than we were. They were. That's we, exactly uh, right. We played with them, like you said. <clears throat> You know, a break here or there. Well, you take the the one fumble that everybody went crazy over. That uh, our defensive guy, I think one of our backs, stripped the ball from him. Yeah. You know, where I was sitting at, I didn't hear no whistle. But now I was up in the nosebleed section, so. Yeah, I I didn't hear one either. But you, you know, you sometimes you're not close enough. To that's it true. Out there, but what not so? But <clears throat> hey, it was it wasn't. It doesn't matter. Um. The good, th the good thing is, starting Friday night, we all zero and zero. Again. All zero and zero. Um, Ladarius Stewart was another highlight again this week. He, he had was. 119 rushing. Um, that was a little, I mean, that was sneaky. He didn't have no huge, big runs. He did. And, you know, he had he, to work for it. He did. He worked hard for it. Um, as a matter of fact, in the second half, man, he, I think the first four plays of the second half, he got, and then he come out and sat down. He was like, you could just look at him. Like, yeah. He was gassed. So he was back out there. Um, you know, we, we had a good night um, doing some things right. I think the defense played well, gave up a couple of big plays. But outside of that, man, we did a, a fine job. Um, I do want to say one thing. Um, <clears throat> I just want to just tip my hat to Mason Gann. He had a phenomenal punt in the end zone. He did. Um, Friday night. I was like, I was blown away. I said, wow, that was pretty solid. Um Max Preps had him with a punt average of 55 yards Friday night. I was like, golly, that's pretty solid. So, yeah. so uh, he, he played well in that aspect. And, um, you know, the de like I said, the defense showed up. So 
It was a uh, it was a good – anytime you hold them to 28 points, you've done something right. pretty well, pretty strong. So. And, and had a chance at the end of the ball game. You know, if you stop them um, right there, because I think they got the ball back with, what, five minutes ago? Mm-hmm. And, I um, mean, if you could stop them three and out or even it's on the second series, uh, you know, you could get the ball back with a potential of tying it up. So, I, I mean, it, it wasn't like last year. That's what's crazy about choice. We hit him three yards deep, and that jerker would, you know, still get yeah. four yards, five yeah. yards out of the deal. Man, he's that good, but he doesn't seem like he's that big and can carry the pile. But he moved his legs and kept it going. Yeah. Man, he's he's just a phenomenal runner. So, anyways, I interrupted you. Go ahead. No, you were saying something about last year. Yeah, I mean, you know, last year it was after we played with him through halftime, and uh, you know, our kids wore out. So, I mean, it, it was we played a complete ball game. Uh, yeah, we lost by seven. Uh, but for me as a fan, uh, you know, I'm excited for the rest of the year. Who knows what can happen? That's right. Because, you know, I feel like they some of the teams in the region that are not what they were or have been. Uh, you know, Tiff County's one of them, too, on the flip side of that. If you take some of these other programs, I feel like that is down. But I think Tifton is, is or oh, even the guy from Thomas County Central. You know, he said that Tiff County was going to make some noise in this region. Certainly. So, you know, I hope we start Friday night making some noise. I, I said it Friday night, and they said it on the show afterwards. I said, man, there's going to be two teams in this region that aren't going to be going anywhere. Right. That can win some games in other regions. Right. And maybe be at the top of that region. Who knows? Yeah. And that's a shame, but it's a testament to how good our football is down here. So, um, you know, we got a big, big test this week against Coffee County. Um, I, I really like, I like our matchup in this, and the, the main reason why there's not an Adam Choice on the other side exactly. of the football for Coffee. Exactly, and uh, that means you know it, it's we're going to match up well with them. Um, that doesn't mean we're going to be handed the game by no stretch, but it's going to be an interesting football game. Mm-hmm. So um, secondary is going to have to play strong. Because I think they're going to throw the ball a little more than I think TCC they will did. I think they will. They'll, they'll throw the ball a little more. Uh, but, you know, again, like you said, uh, hopefully they don't have a back that you hit him deep in the, in the backfield and he gains six, seven yards. Yeah. I hadn't seen it or hadn't heard if he does, you know. Yeah. Uh, last I heard, their quarterback was hurt. That's what I heard. And I think he's still on the shelf a little bit, but. Who knows? They haven't needed him so far. They've beat Whitewater, Ware County, Burke County, and Mundy's Mill. Yeah, All four of them are playoff teams. Yeah, but Mundy Mill was 0 2 <clears> going into <throat> it. Oh, you know. Sure. Yeah. It was 18 to 14. Yeah. I mean, it, it was. And I heard that Coffee had to come from behind to win that ball game. Yeah. Uh, but there again, you know, let's line up Friday night and see who, who's got the better team. Well, we're kind of in a good spot with. Uh, Hoping that next week they play Camden, so maybe they're looking ahead to Camden and not maybe. really thinking about us. Which you know, we play Moultrie next week. We could be in the same boat, but I feel like we'll be focused and ready. I think we'll be ready for that. There, uh, there. For those who don't know, there's a little. There's always been a rivalry with us and Coffee, but it seems like with the kids, it's a lot bigger now. Yeah. Uh, you know, I still think Moultrie is our biggest rival. I mean, people. In my generation, fuss that it's Valhasta and it's swinging towards the lounge and that kind of, it, you know. But like when Ryan Wedgworth was in here, he said coffee. Coffee. Um, so the modern rival is coffee. And <clears throat> with that said, we had a kid come over, transfer, if you will, mm-hmm. named Brandon Rowe, who was with us for most of the summer. Then right before school started, he went back to he coffee. Went back coffee. And I do know that. There's a lot of kids on that football field not happy about that. So, uh, whatever we do Friday night, let's do it with class. But let's go get him. That's what I say. That's let's right. go after him. Let's let's let him know that he made a mistake by going back to by coffee. Going back. Yeah, and and I want I want us to thump them pretty good. So, yeah, we we you know it would be nice to to put a beat down on them, but you know right now first region game. I'd settle for a three point or you know, one point. <laughs> you know, as long as it's a W, I don't That's, care how we get it. I agree. I totally agree. So with Amazon Prime, you get instant access to over forty thousand movies and TV episodes anytime, along with unlimited free 
two-day shipping on millions of items with no minimum order size. You also get a Kindle book to borrow for free each month from the Kindle Owner's Lending Library. Amazon Prime Instant Video is available in a wide range of devices such as the Roku, PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, Wii U, and televisions, DVD, and Blu-ray players from Samsung, Panasonic, Sony, LG, and Vizio. Start your 30-day trial today by visiting anero.tv slash prime30. That's anero.tv slash p-r-i-m-e-3-0. After your 30-day trial, the service is $79 per year, and you can cancel at any time. I've personally been a Prime member for three years, and for me, it's been one of those services that has the best bang for the buck. Who doesn't like free two-day shipping, plus access to thousands of shows and movies in the comfort of their own home? So check out the 30-day trial of Amazon Prime by visiting our affiliate link at anero.tv slash prime30. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Um, what else you got there, Mike? Uh, well... We want to talk region or let's talk region. Region matchup for this week. Well, we know what the big matchup is. Let's do some. Well, both of the, the other two games, you know, uh, you got Valdosta taking going to Cannon, I believe. Valdosta's in Cannon, yeah. yeah. and then Lowndes is hosting Moultrie. Lowndes and Moultrie. Uh, which one of them you want to tackle first? Um, I don't know. You want to you want to tackle the binoculars gate from last year? In the Camden and I mean the Lounge. Lounge and, and Moultrie. Yeah. Sure. Who you got? Uh I believe the Packers will beat them. I believe overall, uh, yeah, they've got the running back, uh, I believe his last name's King. He's a younger brother of one they had a couple years ago. Uh you know, from what I hear, Lounge is I mean, you can't tell by the last two weeks scores. But I've heard that they have had a few players that has left the program, uh, but when you when you, when you win sixty three to nothing, but there again you got to look at the talent. Something you're... something's going right. Yeah. But before we start on these games, I want to preface something. Um, Lyons got beat by Newton. Newton. Right. Well, this past week Valdosta, Valdosta played Newton. Right. Um, Valdosta beat Newton thirty eight to fourteen. Well, I'm not bringing this up to compare apples and apples and oranges and oranges. You know, uh, a lot of different things go into who wins a football game. But what I do want to bring up is before the Valdosta game, the coach apparently, have you heard about this, carried, mm -hmm. he carried a big sledgehammer out there on the field and, like, took it to the middle of the field or something and just just hammered down in the middle of Baysmore Hyder Stadium, and which is, I mean, really? That's, wow, that's the winningest high school program oh, yeah. ever. and. Yeah. You're going to go in their backyard and just slam a hammer down. I, I like the moxie he's showing, but, mm, well, the game went on, and then Valdosta wins 38-14. Well, Valdosta, uh, Rance Gillespie goes out there to shake his hand. It said something along the lines of, Coach, you, I'm sure you normally run a, a – I'm sure you're a class act, but we didn't appreciate what you did before the game. Right. And this, that, and the other. And apparently they started jawing at each other, and then the cops had to carry the Newton coach out of there. Oh, I hadn't heard none of that. Yeah, so, um, which was uh, funny to a degree, but, you know, I understand he's trying to psych his guys up, but, I mean, maybe maybe that is a little disrespectful. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, anytime you go in and do something like that, on a, I mean, yeah, you want to fire your kids up, but there's better ways of doing it. Well, there's you classier know, ways. Classier ways. You know, you don't want to. Oh, uh, man, I'm itching. I think I got fleas. I'm sorry. You know, uh, doing something like that. And I'm sure you said it was that he done yeah. it at midfield. Yeah, I think. So, of course, that's where the big V is at. You know, <laughs> yeah. and that's kind of like going on, you know, several years ago, uh, I think Florida and Florida State. You know, they come out and Florida jumped up and down on, you know, the, Florida State's fifty yard line, and you know they had a little fight before the game. You know that, yeah, it something like that is going to fire up your kids. But you know, it sounds like they fired up Valdosta more. Yeah, so they made uh, the wrong team mad, didn't they? A lot of times, you you get more than what you ask for. And, you know, they thought they were going to come down here and go for the sweep of these Valdosta schools, and and yeah, you don't you don't know I, what lounge what happened there. That could have right, been a man. bad night. That's right. Uh, I heard the officiating was a little suspect, but you're going to you know. In, in 
you got to work through that kind of stuff. As a, if a good team, that's what you have to do is work through it. So that's right. You're going to have that. But I just thought that was kind of an interesting little story before we talk about either one of these teams. They both played the same team and the outcomes. But back to Lowndes and Moultrie. Um, I, I think it's going to be a better game. I, I feel like Moultrie's the better team. But. Lounge is going to hang. They're going to. Everybody's oh, yeah. going to be predicting Moultrie to win. So and they're playing at Lounge. <clears throat> yeah, I mean that. You know, I don't know. Playing at that stadium is being <laughs> a home team is a game changer, man. Last Ooh. time, you know, when you sell out your whole home side for reserve season ticket holders, and part of the visitor side, you know, don't leave many many <laughs> seats for. Uh, I went yeah. to a Valasta. I mean a Lounge. Multi game a couple of years ago, and uh, you know they had from the fifty to the north end zone, and that was it. For they was and we we had to sit on a Cocker County fan. I didn't care who won. I just went to see the football game. That's right. And uh, you know that place was packed. It, their side was loud. You know, uh, good place to watch a football game. Great place. Uh, mm -hmm. That's my favorite place to officiate. There in Ware County, both have real good stadiums as far mm -hmm. as acoustics and being loud and. More like a college atmosphere, yeah. I guess. So um, it's it's fun. Now, one year I pulled what I call the trifecta. You had Moultrie playing in the playoffs. Lowndes and Valdosta were both at home. And we went to the Moultrie game, cut over. Had Brooks been playing at home, we'd have stopped to see Brooks. But then we went to, I think we cut over to Valdosta, and then we ended up at Lowndes. And <clears throat> they were playing Collins Hill, and it was late in the game. And that place was still packed mm -hmm. out. I mean, it was just rocking, packed out. As a matter of fact, I think it went overtime, if I'm not mistaken, or or we'll come down to the uh, last couple of plays of the game. So, um, a phenomenal experience, and it was just a, a good atmosphere. Even at the bays, man, it was a pretty good atmosphere, mm -hmm. considering because they're touch and go down there sometimes. But um, both fun places to be and and be around. So, um, but I'm I'm going with Moultrie. I think they're battle tested. They've, you know, they've played a tough schedule. But on the flip side of that, you know, like we talked about last week, uh, I don't know how many they've got back healthy. Uh, I do know that their big defensive end is out for probably going to be until they make playoffs, if they make the playoffs, which, you know, most will be in the playoffs. They may, they may be that fourth seed. Uh, but he broke his ankle a couple weeks ago. And, uh, you know, they had a lot of kids that's, that's not healthy. So maybe, you know, maybe they was, maybe they are back this week. Because uh, you, you never wanted a ball game to go where, you know, you got one side where your key players are out. Sure. You know, when you line up, you want to, you know, see who the better team is. Well, they beat Carver 34 nothing, which Carver is pretty good, but mm -hmm. I feel like they should have beat them by more, and they might have had they been healthy. So, right. and maybe they were throttled back because – Region is starting, so um, it's hard to say. So, well, let's talk about the Camden and Valdosta game. What do you think mm -hmm. about that? How you like it? I think from what I did see Camden play early in the season, I think they're down, you know, from what they have had in the past. Uh, I believe Valdosta go over there and uh, give Camden a hell. Do really do. I think your three winners in region play this Friday night will be Valdosta Wildcats and Camden, Lam uh, Moultrie and Lambs and Tiff County. That's my my pick for the three. I'll take it. I like it. Um, Valdosta's good, man. They lost their quarterback, but they got two yeah. phenomenal running backs, solid defense, which they always do. Their their defense goes unnoticed a lot of times for do. some reason, but um, they uh, – I think they're going to go over there and beat Camden. I think it's going to be closer than, than people are, are thinking, too. It's going to be another tough ball game. But it, it could be – hold on, i got some breaking news right here. Uh-oh. Oh, Coach Prost is about to be on uh, ESPN E60. Mm. buddy of mine just sent me a text. Um, <clears throat> if you want to watch that, wait till uh, we're done here in about yeah. 15, 20 minutes, and you can flip over to it. That's what DVR is so. for. That's right. That's exactly right. So, um, but uh, Val, I think I think it'll be a, a tighter ball game than we anticipate. Camden's getting better, you know. Sure, they beat Beach at ninety-two to nothing or whatever. Yeah. But with every snap, they're getting better. 
and they're moving the right direction, as all of our teams are in the region. So That's right. now it's time for people to take a step back, and and we'll we'll start weeding people out and and finding out who's for real and who's not. So it all starts at the Brody Friday night, Coffee County. I'm ready. Me too, man. I'm pumped. Eight o'clock kickoff, I believe. Eight o'clock. Um, now, did I hear that the uh, <clears throat> is it homecoming is seven thirty kickoff? Because it's Camden? Yeah, it probably is because they haven't traveled so far. Yeah. So, so you know, that's any way you go to Camden or come here, it's a two and a half hour ride. Yeah. Uh, Teleportation or helicopters, only two yeah. ways you can get there. Yeah. It's, so, uh, we went over there last year and I didn't think we was ever going to find the stadium. I know. I've past few years, I've done playoff games over there, round one or two. And uh, it's just. <sighs> You got to leave so early on Fridays mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff, and it's just a terrible ride because there's nothing between here and there. Right, backwoods. But the good thing is they come over here. Yeah, thank goodness so, they're coming over here. So, and it's homecoming night. It's homecoming. There's gonna be a Yeti cooler giving away. Do you know about that? Yes, I do. Oh, tell the people it's about chilling it. with Yeti. Chilling <laughs> with Yeti. The Tiff County <clears throat> wrestling. Wrestling with wrestling. E. Oh my gosh! Club is. Raffling off a Yeti cooler. You can see Randy. I know he hadn't sold any of his tickets yet. Or you can see myself. Uh, I'd just like to point out I've got a whole book sold. Thank you. You got the money, Clay? Yes. Okay. Well, good. You need some extra ones? Because I got some more. I need to put that check in the deposit, too. Oh, okay. I... But anyway, getting back to business. Uh, one raffle ticket will cost you $5, or so you can get 5 for 20 Uh, You know, it's. I just left a baseball meeting. You know, and the first thing they're talking about is money. You know, wrestling. You know, and it's that's one of the things that every sport with the cuts that the school board has got. You know, you the the sports is what suffers. You know, too. So <clears throat> you know, without you, different booster clubs out here raising money. Um, you know, you you got to come up with a different way to to fundraise. Uh, to get these, because these kids, we need to back them. Not only do we need to back them, you know, by, by showing up and showing spirit at these, whether it's football, baseball, wrestling, basketball, whatever. Wrestling. Uh, but, you know, we have to come up with financial also. Uh, yeah, um, and, and part of my post I put on a website, that's one thing I said is, you know, um, support these kids whether it's admission into the game that supports right. them um but while you're there drink all the cokes and popcorns and you get your devil devil horns, horns. light of the horns yeah uh come come buy a ticket for the yeti cooler sure you might not you might have 30 of them but it's not about the cooler right it's a way bigger cause than a cooler right you know um and just remember that. Oh, I don't need a Yeti cooler. Yeah, you may not, but this kid needs five dollars because the only meal he might get might be through just five dollars. So, and that's one of the things we done last year. With you know, we formed this booster club and right for the wrestling club. Um, wrestling. Go ahead. We, uh, you know, we went down to Cairo, and uh, they were some new kids. If it hadn't been for some of their parents. Yeah, you know, they'd have been down there all day long without anything to eat. Without anything, yeah. Um, and and you know, you th you think of it as you just assume the kids are taken care of. Well, right. you know, without a good parental support group, they might not be, man. There's you know, I way more kids than coaches in in a lot of these sports. You're right. And so, without good parents, and unfortunately, we have a group of good parents, but individual parenting as a whole is just is lacking, and you know. Not that we're babysitting, but we are. Well, a lot of times we are. But we are. That's right. So, you yeah. know, make sure you support these kids, man. That's what it's all about. That's what this show's about, support. Um, if if we get one kid excited about hearing their name over the Internet or on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, my face, all those social media sites, then we're doing our job. You know, we're, we're, we're changing one kid's life. That's okay. So, um so go support them. Be there Friday night, 8 o'clock kick. Come early. Come early. There's T-shirts to buy. There's devil horns to buy that light up that are nice. And there's Yeti coolers to be raffled right. off. Come early. Come See hungry. the band. 
See the band. Bring some cash. Bring cash. That's right. So a lot going on. Um, what else you got? Uh, you know, we talked a little bit last week about the girls' <coughs> softball team. They did win last week again. Move, uh, improved to 20-1. Uh, weather permitting, they will play host a re- another region game tomorrow. And uh, I believe it is at home. I saw Coach Ivy, Ivy um, Friday night, and I should have hit her up then, but I didn't. And then I think next week they play two doubleheaders, and, th- and then it'll be set for uh, playoffs time. Uh, you know, they, they need some love to um, shoot you. I agree. You know, you can support them by going out and giving you five dollars to get in the gate. That's right. You know that that goes to to support them also. Yep, that's right. Um, somebody asked me last week why I didn't use my card to get into the game, and I said, you know, these kids need my eight dollars or whatever it was, mm-hmm. just like ours do home. So that's right. Um, I paid my eight dollars, my twenty four dollars. So. So go out there and support them. Yeah. It's going for a good cause. It's, you know, it's keeping these kids off the street. That's uh, right, man. You know, anytime, you, whether you're playing baseball, I mean, football, or, you know, any team sport, you know, they, them kids form a bond. You know, it's something that la- it lasts a lifetime. Uh, you know, I run into some guys that I played with and against 30 years ago. Uh that you know we done got old, old and fat and can't play no more, but we can still talk about how great we was back then. <laughs> you know, the, the older that's, we get, the better we were. That's that's all we got left. You know, it? yeah, it's a <laughs> fond memory. You know, uh, but come out and support Blue Devils in, in whatever, whether it's football or whatever. Um, and you had a baseball meeting tonight. Is there any good news coming out of that? Anything we need to know? No, I mean Not it's yet. you know this is the first meeting of the year. Okay. Uh, trying to fire it up. Uh, I do, you know, I think they will. Their first game varsity is like February 17th, maybe. Um, Gosh, you know, it'll be here before yeah, you know. Yeah, you know, you, you think here we are, what, the fifth week in football and we're having baseball meetings. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, all summer long, you know, we had meetings trying to raise funds for, what's the word? For what? Wrestling. There you go. Not for wrestling, that, wrestling. You know, so, I mean, it takes dedication for parents, you know, like Randy and myself that, and others, you know, William Dillard is on our board. Uh, trying to think who else is on there. Uh, come on, hit me out. Well, I'm sorry, I'm looking up something. Uh, who's on our board? Yeah, on our Gloria Dillard and Todd Gann and the Shimmels. Just Era and Oh Barry now. Craig uh, Barry. But I mean it takes people like that that don't mind going out and beating the bushes and uh, to make these programs successful. So, yep, that's right. That is right. So, anyways, well, I guess that's all we got this week. Um, there are a couple of, uh, I know there's a 7th and 8th grade game this week. Looks mm-hmm. like 8th yep. grade is away at Coffee. Wait, no. They're at home against Lowndes. I'm sorry. And the 7th grade, that would put them on the road. At Lounge. What about JV in ninth grade? Um, I don't have that in front of me. Why not? Because. You slipping in your old age? No, it's just that this website is not set up. Mm. It's not conducive for me. What? But either ninth grade or JV will play at home Thursday at the high school. Um, Correct? Here it is right here. Girls softball tomorrow, Mm -hmm. seventh grade game at Coffee Middle, Tiff County High School volleyball at Warner Robins tomorrow, Um, football game, eighth grade versus Newburn at Brody Field Thursday, freshman football game Thursday at Tiff County High School at six, Mm -hmm. and then varsity Friday night, cross country meet this weekend at Thomasville. Competition cheerleading, cheerleading at Lambert High School. What else you want? Mm, that sounds pretty good. A lot going on. I think there was a guy who was talking about this over the weekend. And I believe starting from the seventh grade up uh, in all the different age groups, uh, 
I don't think Tiff County's lost but three games in football. Mm-hmm. Yeah, including the the one Friday night. Uh, so that tells me our program is going in the right direction. Uh, Certainly. You know, get out. And, you know, we need to come out and uh, keep encouraging these young men to get out here and play. And go through what they're going through. Uh, because, you know, the devil nation is rising back up. I guess I guess if we are the devil nation, correct? I know. Yeah. You so, feel bad about saying that, don't you? You feel like you're saying something wrong. But... I don't. Oh, okay. I don't either. That's why I grew up a devil, been a I devil. Put it, you know. I put it in the appropriate context. Yeah, I, I was a, well, in my younger years, you know, I, it was probably a little different, but <laughs> I asked my parents. So. That's right. So, anyways, well, we're going to quit boring you, leave you alone, and we'll see you guys next week. Make sure you get out to the game. Uh, big game. Can't, got to encourage you. Be out, 8 o'clock. Um, we'll see you next week. Um, Mike might be back with us. Uh, he might not. He's going to be back in some capacity. So until next time, follow us on uh, social media or Facebook, Devil's Lair 1 on Twitter. Hit us up, and we'll see you next week. So from the Devil's Lair, I'm Randy Meadows. Fear the pitchfork. Go Big Blue. You got it right. Yeah, you got it right. <laughs>